Saudi Arabia's sports minister says claims of sports washing against the country are very shallow. He's been defending the right to host the 2034 World Cup. Critics say unprecedented spending on sport has been used to improve Saudi Arabia's reputation over its human rights record and environmental impact. Our sports editor Dan Ron has been to the country. He was accompanied by Saudi Ministry of Sport officials and he spoke to Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal in an exclusive interview. Our ambition is to host the best events around the world and the kingdom for the people of the, of the kingdom to see, but also to invite uh, the world to the kingdom. You have Formula One, I think is one of them, uh, FIFA World Cup and the Olympics. Uh, these are the highest mm. uh, events that any nation would love to, to, uh, to, to host within, within their countries. Do you want to be the sort of number one sporting superpower in the world? I don't see it that we're competing with others. Okay. I see it that we're playing our role to develop sports within, within the world and to be part of the international community. I'm sure that hopefully by the 2034 uh, people will have uh, an extraordinary World Cup that they remember. Is your expectation, Your Highness, that it would be staged now in winter? I don't know yet, to be honest. Uh, definitely we are studying both options to see what is the best option to host the World Cup. You're saying it's possible you could host it in summer. It's, you haven't ruled that out. That, no, that's... we're actually studying that. You're studying that? Yes. How, how, how could you do that when the temperature is so... Hopefully we'll find out. Definitely we'll work to make sure that it's the best World Cup to ever be hosted in any country. For those who say that Saudi Arabia is not a suitable host, what would your message be to them? I think we've showcased that we've hosted more than 85 global events and that we've delivered on the highest level. So when you're accused of sports washing, does that frustrate you? Yeah, I think it it's very shallow. Uh, on, on what they, and, and I'm sure that a lot of the people that accuse us of that haven't been to Saudi or haven't seen what we're doing on the ground. But when they come and they see nine, six years old kids ha have that opportunity uh, to meet with the best in the world, when they meet Cristiano Ronaldo or they meet uh, the top athletes that come, mm. uh, that's, that's opportunity. Human rights campaigners will say, well, look at the imprisoning of uh, campaigners for women's rights. Any country around the world has room for improvement. No one's perfect and we acknowledge that. And we are reforming. Uh, and these events help us reform. Women's participation in sport has increased uh, by 50% uh, compared to the population. So that opportunity and these reforms that have been opened up have, have given opportunity to the youth, uh, men and women, to, to participate in the sports that they love. There will be some who ask if they're gay or if they're a woman, is this a place they'll be welcome? Will they be safe if they were attending the World Cup? We've hosted a lot of events in the past, more than 85 events. Uh, everyone's welcome in the kingdom. Uh, like any other nations in, in, in around the world, we have rules and regulations that everyone should abide by and respect. Uh, when we come to the UK, we respect the rules and regulations, whether we believe in them or not. During the Qatar World Cup build-up, uh, there was a lot of controversy around the treatment of migrant workers because of the amount of building work required in such a short space of time. Is that a problem that could be repeated with a World Cup here? I assure you it's not going to be repeated. Uh, we have 10 years uh, to work on that. We already started in a lot of the venues. Uh, so we have a long time to do it in the right time, in the right process, and also with the collaboration with FIFA to, to, to put the right steps in. There's been a lot of debate around the bidding process that led you to becoming the sole bidder for 34. We've been studying it for a long time. Mm. Uh, and when we saw the opportunity come in, we submitted a bit uh, to, because we were ready. What we should look at is what benefits the sport of football. So no deals with FIFA because people said lack of transparency. Everyone voted, everyone was clear on the regulations. Uh, nobody objected to them during their, uh, mm. so I don't think there was any lack of transparency from mm. FIFA. Uh, it was only that we were ready to do it. Uh, and maybe others weren't. Uh, that's not our fault, I think. Some people say Saudi Arabia, one of the biggest oil exporters in the world. And a lot of this is again designed to maybe distract attention from that fact. It's do you not, reject it's, that? I reject that completely because we are taking that seriously. And we, we are part of this globe. So we have to make sure that our future as well is, is, is confined in the, in, the right, uh, for our, in the right way for our kids. How confident are you that the environmental cost of staging such an event in this country is worth the benefits? It's a mandate on us in the 2030 vision to make sure that we abide by the international regulations, that we abide by the international requirements to make sure that we play our role, to make sure that it's eco-friendly. But how is staging a massive event consistent with that? Is it not a contradiction? Not at all, because as I said, it's part of our development. We take that in consideration. What do we need to do to make it 
efficient uh, for the environment towards that and we work on that. You mentioned the Pro League, the players that you've managed to attract are being taken away from other leagues. So do you think, for example, the Premier League should be worried? Are you well, a threat to the Premier League? I think the Premier League did that and that's how they started. So nobody questioned them when they did it. So, as I said, our focus is to develop sports within the kingdom, to develop our league. There are some matches that attract much more audience than, than others, but all of our you know, uh, big matches, I would say, have attracted record numbers so far uh, in terms of viewership, in terms of attendance in the, in the stadiums. When we thought about this and we planned to develop the league, we never thought that we'd do it at such pace. Mm. But to see that is actually uh, refreshing and it actually showcases the importance of this. Saudi Arabia Sports Minister there speaking to our sports editor Dan Rowan. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.